guys, it's Laura. Thank you so much for watching and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will show you how I made my new pole dance outfit and my new swimwear. As usual, I will explain the pattern and then I will show you how I made the pieces. So if you want to know more about that, then please keep watching. Now let's have a look at my sketch first. So I made obviously a sketch of the high neck top and the pants. And I will explain also the pattern for the other top that is a bit lower with the help of this sketch. So let's start with the top. Now I have a pattern for a tank top about which I know that fits me well and it's really tight. I have a tutorial about how I copied my favorite tank top, so I will link it down below. And I basically use the pattern as a base for the high neck top. Now, you can see the yellow marks and the green um, <clears throat> part that marks the tank top. So you can obviously see the changes. Now, I measured how far the top is supposed to go below my breasts. And um, this is where I made this line. And then I made a pattern for the band beneath my boobs. It's a little bit tighter on the sides than this width, but um, it's basically just a rectangle. So this is nothing special. You just have to measure the circumference of your body below the breasts. And that's pretty much the length of this one, maybe minus an inch because when it's a little bit tighter, it's going to give you more support. The next thing I had to measure was the distance from the point below my boobs up till my neck. So this is then this height. And then you can see that I went a little bit inwards towards my neck. Now at the end, I had to make bustards. So you might want to mark that because sometimes this is a little bit too open. And I will show you also how to make the bustard when you put the top on. Uh, basically, it's just a few inches away from the seam and you go towards your boobs. This is mostly about an inch and it should be just a little triangle where you sew the thing together. So now when you have your boobs here and that would be the nipples. This is pretty much where the dart goes. So if you would measure the distance from your armpits to your nipples, that's about the length of the bust darts. I hope this made any sense that I just tried to explain. Now we have the front part and the back part. My phone is making noises and the back part. So this is the same height and it goes a little bit lower in the middle. Now, for the other top, that wasn't the high neck version, but the lower version with the strap, I made sure that I will find a point where usually the lowest point of my neckline would be. And then I made a nice round shape. And this would be the front for the other top. For the pants, I took one of my favorite undies now. You can clearly see that I'm wearing these a lot because they have these unmistakable signs of being washed multiple times because the elastic band is not so super stiff anymore, but that's all right. Um, so how to copy a pattern for your undies is also something I already filmed. I copied a different type, but it's pretty much the same procedure. You just have to straighten your panties as good as possible. Now here, this part goes a little bit further than when I fold them in the middle. So I copied this and then I added this little part for the front. Then I turned my panties to the other side and then I copied the back again. Here, the seam is a little bit more in the front. So I had to account for that. But other than that, you basically copy the line at seam allowance. And I did the same with the waistband. However, for my pants, I have decided to have higher waistband. I didn't want the pants to be exactly high waist, but I didn't want them to be low waist either. I wanted to be somewhere in the middle. So I doubled the height of the of the elastic band. And again, I just measured this size and uh, like this width. And then I had 
the measurements for my waistband and that was basically how I created the pattern for the panties. Here we have all the pieces for my new pole dance outfit with the high neck top. So let's start here on the left side. So on the top is the band that's gonna go around my neck and here we have the clip that will be the closure. This is the front part made of the denim jersey and this is the second layer made of plain black jersey because I like to have two layers for the front. I decided to make only one layer for the back so this is the back part and here we have the band that's gonna go underneath my breasts. Then on the left side on the top this is the waistband for my pants the back part for my pants, the front part, and then the lining made of the black jersey. Like, it's the same black jersey that I'm using for the um, front part for my top. I have here also an elastic band for the band underneath my breasts and also for the waistband for my pants. I'm also gonna need a thin elastic band for the edges of my pants and I have decided I'm gonna be sewing with brown thread because this is going to add to the denim look. Now let's start with the pants. So I put together the parts for my pants first, wrong sides up. I placed the middle piece on the top of the back part. I pinned everything in place. And then it looked like this. I have sewn the parts together with a stretchy overlock stitch and I cut back any excess fabric. Next I folded the middle piece to the right side towards the back part and I pinned it in place. I turned the pants to the other side and I cut back any excess fabric from the lining. And so here is what the pants looked like so far. As a next step, I started folding the edge inwards. While I was doing that, I also placed an elastic band inside of the fold. In this case, make sure you do not stretch the elastic out, because then the edge would be too tight and it would cut into your buttocks. That doesn't look attractive, trust me, so make sure that the elastic is flat. Once that was done, I have sewn through the edge and through the elastic with a stretchy zigzag. And then the pants look like this. Next I pinned the sides of the pants together. I have sewn the sides of the pants together with stretchy overlock stitch. And then I folded the seam to one side and I have sewn through with a straight stitch. And then I pinned together the side of the waistband. I have sewn it together with stretchy overlock stitch. Once I was finished with that, I pinned the waistband to my pants. And then it looked like this. I have sewn the waistband on with stretchy overlock stitch and again I folded the seam to one side and I have sewn through with stretchy zigzag. I folded the pants in the middle and I cut back the waistband in the front. I find that it always looks better when I put the pants on when the front is a little bit lower. I usually cut back about half an inch in the front and you can see that I'm moving upwards so that the back remains as high as it was. And then the pants looked like this. I took a wider elastic band, I measured the necessary length and I pinned the sides together and then I have sewn them through with a zigzag stitch. 
I pinned the elastic band to the edge of the waistband. I pinned it to the right side. Here is what it looked like. I have sewn it on with stretchy overlock stitch. Once that was done, I folded the elastic band inwards and I pinned it in place. Here is what it looked like when it was pinned in place. And I have sewn through with stretchy zigzag. I have been sewing a bit further from the edge. My goal was to sew through the opposite edge of the elastic band. And then my pants were done. Now let's have a look at how I made the high neck top. So first I placed the back part on the top of the front part, wrong sides up. And then I put the lining on the back part. And then I pinned the sides together. I have sewn through with stretchy overlock stitch and then it looked like this. As a next step I have turned the top to the right side and I aligned the lining with the front part. I put in a few pins around the edge before I started with the next step. And that would be just like around the edges of my pants, folding the edge inwards and pinning an elastic band inside. In order to avoid the need for bust darts, you can stretch the elastic band a little bit out while doing that. That way the edge would be tighter and I wouldn't have needed the bust darts. But that's okay because at least you will see how it's done. I have sewn around the edge with stretchy zigzag and I have also sewn on the neckband. I folded the bottom edge upwards, then I put inside of the neckband a wider elastic band and I placed the remaining fabric over it and pinned it in place. Then it looked like this and I have also sewn through with these stretches zigzag, just like I have done around the edge. For the bottom band, I pinned the sides of the band together and I have sewn through with stretchy overlock stitch. Then I pinned it to my top. I have sewn it on the top with stretchy overlock stitch. And just like on the neck band, I have sewn in a wider elastic band and then I have sewn through with stretchy zigzag. About the bust darts, now they are basically nothing else than a seam folded to one side. It goes over your breasts towards your nipples. I also folded it to one side and I have sewn through. You don't have to do that, but I like it. And this is how I made the bust darts. When I put the top on, uh, I pinched the fabric where it stood away and I basically pinned it together and then I have sewn through, so it's nothing else than that. For the neck band, I used this silver clip to close it, but honestly later when I tried it on the pole and I did a few tricks, I could feel it almost opening, so I took it off. And instead of the clip, I have decided to use four sew-on snaps to close the neckband and it is so much more comfortable and also way more secure this way. And then my high neck top was done. I'll be wearing this combo for my pole dance training, but I think I will also wear the top with my jeggings because they were made of the same material and I might wear the top also for jogging and in general this outfit is for me personally also great when I'm doing yoga in summer when it's really hot. 
a few more words about the bastards. Now, obviously for me, they were a solution to a problem. I did not plan on making bastards from the beginning. So that's why I made them after I already finished the edge. But if you plan on making bastards from the beginning, you would first make bastards on both the lining and the back before you would even put the parts together. And then you would fold the edge inwards with the elastic. I think I could have avoided that if I would have stretched the elastic out because this is what I have done on the white top. Now you can see how this kind of ruffles. This is because the elastic has been stretched out a little bit when I was pinning it inside. Now you can see it looks like it's a little bit narrower, but when I stretch it out, it is exactly the same width. So anyway, if I would have stretched the elastic out when I was pinning it in, it would have made a difference because when you look at how long the edge actually is, that's exactly what would have solved the problem from the beginning. But it's okay because sometimes it's very interesting that even these things can be solved afterwards and I hope that my solution here will help you with some other projects where you had the same problem or maybe it's even going to help you to avoid this problem in the first place. Before I start showing you how I made the white outfit, I wanted to return shortly to my sketch. I added a little sketch of the white top. Now that's the lower version. There are a few differences apart from the shape. So for this top, I had two layers for the front and one layer for the back. Here I have two layers for each. Um, the bottom layer is made of fabric that is very similar to my skin tone. And the top layer is made of the white fabric. And around the edge is going to be this bias tape that I made myself with the help of the bias tape shaper or form or whatever you want to call it but you don't need any tool for that all you have to do is to cut a strip of fabric and then you fold it in the middle iron it and then you fold the sides towards the middle and iron again over it and then you have a bias tape it's not perfect but it will do and then you will have a bias tape made of the exactly same fabric that you're using for your top and it will definitely work. You will also need an elastic band for the inside so that it would be stiff enough and stable enough. But other than that, there is nothing special about that. For the white top, I first pinned the sides of the front and back parts of both the white fabric and the lining together. I have sewn the sides through with stretchy overlock stitch and I cut back any excess fabric. I aligned the lining with the white layer so that the right sides would be facing each other and I pinned together the neckline. I have sewn the neckline through with stretchy overlock stitch and then I have turned the top to the right side and um, before I started pinning around the neckline I put in an elastic band. The elastic band was there in order to make the neckline stable so that it wouldn't stretch out and so that it would keep the shape. Once that was done, I have sewn through with stretchy zigzag. And then I pinned the bias tape to my top. So first I opened the bias tape and pinned it like that to the edge. Once that was done, I started adding the elastic band. I started on one side on the loose part and once I reached the edge of the top, I started stretching the elastic band out so that the edge would be a bit tighter and I wouldn't need bastards. Once that was all finished, I have sewn the elastic with the bias tape on with stretchy overlock stitch. And then it looked like this. I started folding the bias tape and pinning it in place all the way through, also through the loose parts. And 
And this is what it looked like when everything was pinned in place. And I have sewn through with stretches zigzag. Here are a few details. And then I added a band on the bottom, same way I did on the high neck top, so I will skip the step. At the end of the loose strap I added a bikini clasp, obviously after I tried the top on and measured how long the neck strap should be. And then my top was done. For the white pants I had a layer of white fabric and a layer of tanned fabric. So first I have sewn the back and front parts together with the stretchy overlock stitch and I cut back any excess fabric. As a next step I aligned both layers, wrong sides facing each other. I pinned both layers together around the edges so that they would stay in place for the following steps. This is definitely helpful because such fabric is very slippery. Once that was done I started folding the edge inwards and putting an elastic band in it. Just like I have done with the other pants. And I have sewn around the edge with stretchy zigzag, then I pinned the sides together. Then it looked like this. I have also folded the seam to one side and I have sewn through with a straight stitch. For the waistband, for the white pants, I have used two layers of the white fabric. I could have used a bottom layer of the tanned fabric, but I didn't have enough, so I used two layers of the white fabric. And the remaining steps were basically the same, like for the other pants, so I will skip them. And this is the finished result when my pants were done. This kind of bikini is great um, when you want to go swimming and when you feel like you don't want to be too revealing, you know what I mean? Like you want to cover a little bit more than usual. And it's a combo that would be also great for either yoga or for pole dance training. So this is how I made my outfits. Now, the white outfit is unfortunately, when it gets wet, still too much of a see-through and I am so happy that I made the wet test before I was wearing it somewhere else because it is it feels pretty naked when it gets wet, so I highly recommend using darker shades for an outfit like that. So I will have to make myself another one. I haven't decided on the color yet. I might go with the safest, which would be black, but we'll see. But I'm still happy I made this because I'm going to wear this also for my pole dance training and for yoga. And that's it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give the video a thumb up because that really supports my channel. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you didn't yet. That would be amazing. And um, as usual, I have listed and linked down below a lot of stuff that might be interesting for you. And thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much. And I'm looking forward to seeing you with my next project. Bye!